legit, folks. This one it all comes down to. Fourteen. Nice shot, Marquez. Question is, will Freddy take the jackets off? <laughs> <laughs> You do big cheese. It's going to be a lot of fun, you know. I think uh, I just look forward to seeing everybody. I think that's the biggest thing. And then obviously the ping pong is a ton of fun too. But um, just getting to talk about Kershaw's challenge at Dodger Stadium. It's not too often that we can have those two worlds collide like they do tonight. Um, it's just amazing what baseball can do as a platform, and it's amazing what. Kershaw's Challenge has been able to do through the support of so many people. Tonight's like a culmination of that with our with our teammates, our beneficiaries, celebrities, just everything. It's just a great night that we're just so thankful that we get to do and uh, be a part of. It's our 10th ping pong for purpose here at Dodger Stadium. It started off in the stadium club. We had about 10 ping pong tables. It was really small and um, really special, though, the way that it started because we kind of just had a singular goal, and that was to raise money to build a home for children in Zambia, Africa. Um, it has now grown, and we are on the field of Dodger Stadium. We have a huge bracket. Lots of celebrities and teammates are here. And again, our singular goal is to raise money for children who are desperately in need. And we're getting to support six different beneficiaries tonight, all supporting children and different needs that they have. You ready, Charlie? No? Backpack time. No. Backpack time. Are you going to give out any backpacks? You're going to give backpacks? Clayton Kershaw's impact around Los Angeles is as easy to see as that break in his curveball. Through Kershaw's Challenge, the charity he and his wife Ellen founded in 2011, giving back takes many forms throughout a year, and today it's close to home, with a distribution of free backpacks right before the start of school. Hold one up. Here you go. Go stand next to Sissy. Okay. Hi right, guys, here you go. Here you go, Bubba. There you go, right there. You got it? All right. How are you? Welcome. Here you go, sis. Here you go. It's big here, you want to put it on? Here you go. All right. Wow, that's so big. <laughs> here, let me help, let me help. There you go. Good job. All right, here you go. Oh, yeah, it's a blast. You know, I think to be able to see the kids come through and then have our crew on the front lines here being able to hand out backpacks is just so much fun. You can keep coming. Come on. There we go. Yeah, good job. Hey, what's up? <laughs> you got it? All right. All right, guys, we're going to give away some books bigger than me. We're going to throw them in some backpacks. Um, have some kids read it. It's about, it's kind of a story about Charlie, but really it's just about every kid and kind of making something that they do bigger than themselves. And so uh, here we go. Give it to a kid. Maybe make Charlie do it. Here, Charlie, trade me backpacks. This one's got a book in it. There we go. You got it? It's heavier. You got it? Okay. There we go. All right, which one has the book? Yeah, that's a good one. There you go. Thank you. Welcome. All right. I uh, know this one has a book in it too. You get it in one more person. Oh, I see one that looks great. How about him right here? So here you go. Come on up, guys. Come on up. Right here, guys. Come on up. Right here. Good job, Char. All right. Two kiddos got some books. I hope they read it. Hi, 
everybody. Hi. Are y'all doing good this morning? Yeah. Okay, so I wanted to read this book called Bigger Than Me, and it's actually a story about Charlie, who's right there, growing up in baseball. And, but more than anything, it's about whatever you do in life to make it a little bit bigger than just about yourself. Okay, is that all right if I read this to y'all? Yeah. Okay. The story is told through the eyes of Kershaw's son, Charlie, but it was written by the ace's sister-in-law, Anne Higginbottom. She doubles as the executive director of Kershaw's Challenge, and it was her sister Ellen and Clayton's work with a charity from Zambia to Los Angeles, touching so many lives, that inspired Anne to put into words what she'd been witnessing for more than a decade. The process of this book has actually been a lot longer than you would expect. About five years ago, I kind of had the vision for what I wanted it to be, and I knew the title. I knew Bigger Than Me. And then, about a year ago, it kind of all came to fruition in my mind. I just casually showed it to my sister and to Clayton and said, hey, I wrote this for your family, and it was so cool just to see their response and just to feel their encouragement from the jump to say, you gotta do something with this. This is really cool. I guess you could say I've loved the game of baseball since before I was born. You see, it's a part of me, a big part. It's one of the first things I learned about. Baseball was one of the first things I loved. My name's Charlie, but before me, there was another little boy named Clayton. That's my dad. People that know my dad when he was my age say that I look a lot like him. We look the same, we're built the same, we even have that same funny twirl in our hair. In essence, it's a little boy growing up in the big leagues, so it tells the story of their family, um, what they have done for the past 16 years. It's about kids finding out what they love to do and making it a bigger deal and making it bigger. And what that means is being able to impact others with what you do, with what you love, with what you're passionate about. And for us, that's baseball, but for, for any kid, that could be anything. And so um, just realizing that you affect a lot of people wherever you are, whatever you do, you have a sphere of influence. And I just want kids to know that at a young age and uh, realize that they can make an impact with whatever they love to do in their life. Before I was born, mom and dad started dreaming about doing something, something bigger than themselves. That dream started in Africa when mom went on a trip to Zambia. It started with a little girl named Hope who needed just that, hope. The story started there and got a whole lot bigger. Dad says it got a whole lot bigger because of baseball. Baseball gave dad an opportunity to help people like Hope. This story, Hope's story, my story is a whole lot bigger than me. The thing I love about the way this book ends is that it's Charlie saying, hey, I bet you're a lot like me. I bet you love to run. I bet even some of you love to get dirty sliding into home. But maybe you don't love baseball the way my family loves baseball, but I wonder what you love. And I bet it's bigger than you. I bet the purpose is a lot bigger than you. Take it from me. I bet it's a part of a bigger story. I bet it's part of bigger than you. Backstage Dodgers is brought to you by Cadillac. Hey, man. What's up, Brian? What's up, dude? Thanks for How coming, you, dude. Oh, I'm my great. gosh. Thank you so much. Yeah. appreciate it. I'm glad you came. How are you? Thank you so much for coming. Oh, my gosh. It's always so good to <laughs> see hey, you when I see you. I'm Madison. This is hey, Madison. Clayton. Yeah, good to meet you. Are you playing? I am. I'm win. No, I'm winning. For sure. Well, I'll see you on the championship. Although I heard yeah. you stack the deck. No, I. This is what I heard. Bit. Yeah, it's been a while since I've won, so I had to like, <laughs> I had to, I had to find some good players, you know. So bad. Oh my I god. Mean, rumor. We got to. Well, now, it. but now if I don't win, it's how's, like. How's bad. how's Chris? Chris Taylor. He's solid. Is that not what you want to hear? That sounds like a. No, no, he's like he's solid. He's gonna do great. Chris Taylor's my partner. Uh, I have to talk to him first tonight, but I think I can speak for both of us when I say dominance, excellence, winningness. Right behind you, can you grab him right now? Oh, yeah. Hey! 
We're partners. We're partners. No, he was asking me about how we were going to do. And I said, well, I have to talk to my partner, but I said, we're going to dominate. And then he goes, well, there he is behind you. So that's So you're going to carry happened. us then. You yeah, see, you yeah, sound pretty confident. Much. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So what can we expect? Are you guys going to uh, shock the world and win this thing or what? I think we're the favorites. Yeah, why would you say shock yeah, the world? I think, yeah. Why would you say shock the world? <laughs> who, who are we paired right. up against? You know? It doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs>
Good match. Thanks, guys. Right. Oh my god. Yo, look at the score. Not a good score. Don't look at it. I think everybody was kind of what I thought they were. Uh, Brazier, Brazier, I hadn't, I hadn't seen him play ping pong before, so Ryan Brazier was pretty good. Um, and then the old Emmett and uh, Bobby Miller team was actually better than I thought. Uh, Emmett not so good, but Bobby, Bobby was pretty solid. So uh, they gave Barnes and I a little bit of a run for our money, but not too much. Hey, yeah, that's the rules. There's no sucker served. We won. I would assume so. Hey, there's a, there's one group of like people that I saw play, like sponsors that look good. Yeah, they're getting massages. Yeah. Oh yeah. What a question. Yeah. About these guys. I know. What, how did you <laughs> lose? Mario Lopez. Mario. <laughs> how do you hold that? So, so he played last year with Doc, and he was like, "Hey, I need a better partner." Like it was a partner. Yeah. So, so I gave him you. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I was, I was playing this and yeah. And you're out. Figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> Main table now. I know you gotta go. You guys aren't playing. No, we were. We. Oh. No, no, we didn't. No, you guys. No. You guys no. just showed. Sure. No, we were just here. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I wish we could have played. Yeah, I wish we could have played, but no, we didn't. All right. That's the story we're going with. Yeah. yeah. You guys just keep. Uh, I wanted to play. Yeah. I right, crush it. Yeah. Crush it. You guys go get it. Go get it. All right, so Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman yeah. just passed by, and, and Freddie says, uh, so you guys aren't playing, huh? No. And because we got our butts kicked in our right, second yeah. game, let's just wipe it from everybody's mind. We didn't yeah. play. Nah, we we wish we could have. Our opponents are glad that we didn't play. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> wow. That, it, we would have got them. would have been embarrassing. But you know what? When you when you when you play ping pong yeah. or poker or hoops, you can play horse, you can play anything. Yeah. With professional athletes, they want to win everything. Everything. Every time. Every They're so time. greedy. I know. Why? <laughs> this is serious over here. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to make it. <laughs> oh! Wow! Good work. Good work. Oh, he's smiling now. First smile. First I know. Next. So <laughs> yeah, you know, I had to study up on all my ping pong lingo, uh, learning what a overhand smash was, the uh, underhand swirly, swirly smoke. Uh, but these are just terms that are for pros like me, not the layman guys. Don't worry about it. It don't look them up. Playing you guys? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Yeah, man, Clayton is a, just a solid dude. Big, big, big personality here in, of course, the city of Los Angeles. And, uh, you know, he, he may take home the trophy tonight. You don't know. We got you. <laughs> hey, good run. Yeah, yeah. Give us the 22,000. Young Boston and Hey, I don't know if I could have rigged the deck anymore. I was absolutely warmed up. I know. Who? Bobby was good. Bobby was good. I got a little nervous every time. I forgot. Yeah, we're not. We're playing Mookie and Freddie. Get your mind right. Who would you rather play? The worst team. Mookie had a smile on his face the whole time, like he knew he was gonna win. What yeah, was that? it was a mismatch. Uh, we won three matches, so I couldn't be happier just to kind of get there. He came in all sweaty, and I think he had just finished. So I'm gonna give him a little break because I think he just finished the match. But uh, I forgot we played him because it was such a short match. Especially when you beat him 21 to 5. Hey, they're not playing tomorrow! They're not playing tomorrow! I tried to 
try not to take it personal, but Mookie hitting balls into my chest, Freddie and those guys embarrassing us. So I have to think long and hard if they're going to be in the lineup tomorrow. But after uh, much consideration, they're both going to be in the lineup tomorrow. <laughs> I'm not dumb. Let's go. I think Clayton stacked the deck anyway because Kirsch and Austin versus Freddie and Mookie, that's the way it should be. Those are the four best, so that's the way it should be. Yeah, I don't even know if you can call that competitive either. But I never sweated at one time in that in that match. It felt like we just had it from the start. And the question is, will Freddie take the jacket off? <laughs> that is a little offensive, yes. Um, you know, Barnsley and I, we, we held our own there pretty good. Nice shot, Barnsley! Freddie and Mookie were uh, super focused the entire night, so um, they're ready to go. Right here. 14 to 12, what a battle. Mookie. Oh! Oh! Freddie says you don't want none of this. Mookie and I started moving real well together in the in our third game, and it just kind of flowed from there. The, is going the jacket on. is just too much. Yeah, Kirsch and Barnes, they didn't have a chance either. <laughs> hey, give her out of play. Hey, give her out of play. Out of play. Out of play. Good work. Good work. Good work. Good work. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. It's a good run. Barnsley and I did our best. Um, I'd like to get another matchup, though, somewhere in there. Maybe we'll get that going, but uh, no excuses. They beat us. OK, it's a very humbling thing to have to give it away a trophy. But uh, once again, before everybody gets out of here, just thank you again for an incredible night. It's been so much fun. And without further ado, I'd like to reign our new champions, Freddie Freeman and Mookie Betts. Everybody give them a round of applause. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Have you all ever won a trophy before, anything like this, as good as this one? Not like this. OK. This is my favorite one because I beat you. Yeah, OK, good. All right. You know, I think it was just a wonderful event. We had so much fun. And um, well, I'm glad, I'm glad Mookie and I won. <laughs> On the next Backstage Dodgers, an ace eyes a late season return and October glory. This is what makes him great. He's, he's an ultimate competitor. Uh, and right now, he's trying to be the best version of himself. And, and so that's what makes Walker unique, is, is the ultra competitor, but also the guy who's always trying to get better and, and make himself the best version that he can be.